as you thought. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought. Real fans, real talk, reporting live from the cam. High in demand, so please stand by if you can. What we got is worth a lot, so put a tie on your plans. On court, talking sports through the eyes of the fans. With Trip Young, Emma Marie, Eric Sanchez. You heard what I said, we elite. Check the latest topics and stay ahead of the beat. Keep us in your topics and we ahead of the streets. What's really good and welcome back to another collaboration episode of The Sanchez Show, along with Real Fans Real Talk. As always, I'm your host, Eric Sanchez, and I got my homie Trip Young with me. But since we're into the conference finals of the NBA playoffs, we felt like it was time to get a little different. Right, Trip? It felt like we needed to get a little different, right? Yeah, so we got to get different. Who, who better to bring on the show than legendary Rucker Park MC, Mike Lowry. It gets different when he's on. Mike, how you doing, bro? And also, happy Father's Day. Word. Appreciate it. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to y'all as well. Uh, man, it's a pleasure to have me. Thanks for having me once again. Uh, I'm just happy to be amongst the land of the living with all that's going on. Um, you know how that get, but uh, thanks once again. Uh, you know, we here, man. It get different when I'm on. You know the vibes. I'm your man from across the bridge. The hip hop got started from the boogie down Bronx to York. They call me your shooting Mike Larry, and it get different when I'm on. <laughs> yeah, I love it, baby. Fresh out it. the record too. Yeah, yeah. Big shout out to Rucker. Every you know yeah, what the Rucker Park summer. energy already. We feel it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just got out. Just left the park, man. Normally I do this in my crib, have a nice little setup. I'm like, I gotta do this on the road today. So let's get it, man. Let's get it. Oh uh, man, definitely welcome back. Um, I, I, I ran, I ran into you know for the for the for the fo- folks at home. I stopped by the Rucker on uh, Wednesday for Graf versus uh, Benny the Butcher, and, and you know I was already expecting you to be be on the microphone calling that game. So when I saw you, I was like, yeah, the energy is here. The energy is on the court right now. We, we about to go in, and uh, it definitely was a nice little spark off to the summer because you know last last summer. We didn't get to be outside for none of the. We didn't get to go to Rucker, Dykeman, Tri-State, uh, Hoops in the Sun, nothing. So it was good yeah, to be back. Absolutely, absolutely. You know what I mean? Um, the, the the pandemic did us filthy, but um, I think it was a blessing in disguise that gave everybody a much needed vacation, a much needed break, a much needed regroup. Um, I started a lot of different things, like um, finally got my LLC to my bet, my brand, Mike Larry Entertainment, um, copywriting and all that other stuff. So. Um, that, shout out to the, you know I mean, the pandemic, even though it was a bad one, it was a blessing in disguise because it took opportunity for me to get things situated, not just for me, but for my family in the long run. Like, you know, I'm setting this up for my kids for like that. They can take it and run with it. So, um, you know, it's good to be back outside though. It's definitely good to be back outside. Oh, that's, that's Absolutely. How, how's the energy in the park, Mike? Cause like you said, every, everybody had that kind of year off to sit back. Now everybody's excited to get back. We're getting back to normal, see people in the park. So what's that energy like back in Rucker for the people that have never been there before? Um, it's different. It's different, but it's it, it feels like 96, you know? Like, we got the crowd back, you know what I mean? Slowly but surely, every day we get in some type of momentum, you know what I mean? And and uh, we still got the family-oriented, you know what I mean, atmosphere, and we still got the after-work vibes and happy hour. Like, you want to come and you want to just chill, and sit back and relax and enjoy the game and sip on your sippy cup, then so be it. You know what I'm saying? We, we got that we got that vibe back. So, you know, I'm, I'm happy that we're able to get that vibe back because it's been a long time coming, you know? Well, one thing I will say is um, being out there on Wednesday is that the, the, the good folk of New York City are definitely – uh, welcoming those changes that were made to, you know, for for all the, the 420 people <laughs> out there. I will say that. I will say they are not wasting any time. Uh, Top shelf. <laughs> but good times, good times, good times. I'm just happy to see everything is back. Um, I mm-hmm. saw on uh, Instagram, and I don't know where you're going to be at this time because I know you usually bounce around, um, mm-hmm. but Hoops in the Sun and Dykeman are supposed to open up on July 4th weekend. So they'll be back then. Um, I, I haven't seen uh, Tri-State or Gersh yet, um, but where are you going to be mostly during the summer? I'm only two places this year. I'm at Rucker, um, 155 Entertainers, Rucker Park, and I'm at um, LES Express. Uh, I'll be making appearances at uh, Oops in the Sun. Um, I'll be making appearances at Basketball Beauty. Um, but real, real, for the most part, I'm at Rucker Park. I'm at LES Express occasionally. Um, but I'm at Rucker Park and LES Express is my main two. Um, and then, of course, I do my my outside ventures. I, I'll be in um, Jersey with Tim Thomas 
Um, I may be going out to Costa Rica um, with a with a couple other stuff in, in, in place. So, you know, stuff like that. I don't speak no Spanish. I don't know how I'm going to figure it out. But, you know what I mean? If they fly me out there, I'll be there. <laughs> you have to get get, uh, get Eric to, to roll. What you were saying on the trip? The translator. translator. <laughs> Mike, I might. Send, send me the itinerary, Mike. I might have to book a flight and just go out there as a translator for you, man. <laughs> no, listen, I'll take it, man. For real, for real. So, some things we're working on, man. But, yeah, Elias Express and, and Rucker Park. You know, my main two. My main one is Rucker Park, of course, because that's Monday through Thursday. LES Express runs Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, I'll be figuring out which days I'm going to do, um, but I'll be making some appearances out there and appearances here and there. That's what it is, Mike. And, and I'm so happy for you, man. Um, you know, you've been a great friend and supporter of the show. And like you said, I see you bouncing around. You're doing different things. I know you were in VA a few a few months ago, I believe, yes. right? Like right at the beginning of the springtime. Yes. So is that something else you're going to be doing a little bit more? You're going to be doing a little more state-to-state stuff? Yeah, I'm working on doing state to state. Um, big shout out to my man Eugene Wiley, who has the um brand Peace and Love Community, and he goes from state to state and doing community basketball games. He do um high school girls, high school boys, and men's unlimited. Um, next stop is North Carolina. We're working on that one. Um, every year we do Virginia. Uh, last or two years ago we did Virginia for um one of the ladies out there. She was diagnosed with cancers, and God God bless, she had beat it. So we did a cancer awareness um basketball game for her, and she beat it. Uh, and thank God for that. So we working on now, we working on uh, North Carolina, Raleigh, North Carolina, and then we're gonna go state to state. So I'm, I'm locked in with that as well. So yeah, we working on some things, any contributors, anybody wanna be a part of that, let me know. We'll make it happen. That's what's up. Uh, we definitely want to speak about that um, yeah. and, and see, see, see what we can do do as well. Um, let's, let's, let's jump into a little bit of this uh, NBA playoff stuff because a lot went down. In the past two days, a uh, couple of game sevens, uh, you know, I, I guess we, I guess we got to start with the with, with, with Brooklyn since we're in in New York. Uh, game seven, Kevin Durant played his heart out, but a, mm-hmm. but a, but 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 a big toe on the three point line kind of cost mm-hmm. them the the the, the series. Uh, it is rough though, man. Yeah, it, it is rough, man. Once again, big shout out to both teams that participated. Um, Milwaukee Bucks who survived and um and the Brooklyn Nets. Uh, I don't think the big toe lost in the game. Um, I think that one timeout that they didn't call lost in the game. Um, you have to give my man Kevin Durant, who logged in 48 plus minutes, you gotta give him 30 seconds to 60 seconds to catch his breath because all he needed was a 40, 40 second break to rejuvenate, to give him a oomph, to get him over the the, the, the the top. But that's a rookie coach mistake, you can tell. Um, Steve Nash is trying to take that 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 uh, timeout with him for next season, and unfortunately, you can't take it over. So um, I don't think the, the big toe lost in the game. I think that timeout um, lost in the game. But uh, he played hard. Kevin Durant is going to be Kevin Durant. He's going to show up every time, you understand? Um, he needed a little bit of help. Big shout-out to, to James Harden who did what he had to do with a with – a, with a, a, a labrum hamstring, you know what I'm saying? That's difficult. I, um, I pulled my hamstring some years ago when I was playing basketball, and it still bothers me every once in a while. So I can only imagine someone who does it for a living, you understand? So, um, but yeah, man, they, they played their heart out, man. I really wish that they would have went on. Uh, I'm not mad that they didn't go on because I think it gives them, it gives Coach Steve Nash a learning experience. I don't like nobody coming off the, coming into this with no experience and win it all because then you never had no humble experience. I like you to take the bumps in the road. So like that, when you win, now it's like, you know what, he earned that. You understand? So uh um big shout out to KD, you know what I mean? I know he signed up to play for 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 Team USA. Um, but before you make that stop, make sure you stop at 55th one more time, KD, stop playing. That'll be a good look for the summer. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, that's a fact. And, and Mike, I'm, I'm so happy you mentioned that because that's one of the biggest things I've been saying in, in terms of Steve Nash and his inexperience as a head coach, because this time of year, coaching matters. you got to understand how to handle your rotations. And when you look at the minutes KD played from game five, game six, game seven, he was damn near on the court all game, no breaks. And I think the utilization of the timeouts could have been big. I also mm-hmm. think there were moments where, especially in game seven, where they could have gone to hack a to slow down the game and kind of get in game stops and breaks there so that KD could breathe because when you look at their five, KD, Harden, Bruce Brown never came off the court. All three of those guys played the whole game seven. And then um, Joe Harris and, and Blake Griffin both played 48 minutes. 
So the whole starting five needed some some breather. And Nash, again, got caught up in a moment and just didn't know how to utilize his, his timeouts or even use some sort of break within the game to allow these guys to get a breather. I never even thought about that, the, the Yaka Giannis. That, that, the, the Yaka Giannis. That was, that was, you know what I mean, that's a real good strategy. But, you know, you 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 the guru, man. I call you the, the, the basketball, the sports guru, you know what I mean? You know, baseball, football, this man know everything. Man. I'll be watching your show sometimes. I'll be tripped out, be like, how, 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 how is – he doing this thing, dude. But you know that's a good strategy. But like you said, the inexperience of 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 Steve Nash, you understand? But it's a good learning experience. It's a good one. You understand? I think he's gonna learn more. Um, sucks at the injury bug, plagued him at the wrong moment. Um, it really sucks at the injury bug, plagued him at the wrong moment. And, and I wish them nothing but the, but the best in the near future. So I'm 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 gonna comment on those two things that y'all said, Eric. You you've been tough on Steve Nash all season, and, and it, you was definitely right about it. Um, but if if we're gonna talk about the coaching, then we gotta hold two people accountable for that. One is Kevin Durant because you picked an inexperienced guy that you that that you was cool with. That was your boy. You want him to come in, and and now you know what I'm saying it didn't work out as you as you thought it would. You know what I'm saying? And then like the, the, in those moments, those where well, you could have been fouling Giannis, who who hasn't uh, stepped his free throw shooting game up during the, during the playoffs. Or you could have been making different adjustments uh, d- during the game to help that timeout. Thanks, you know, there's a lot of different things that go alongside of that. And then Kyrie Irving, uh, we don't need a coach. Right. Mm-hmm. He said they didn't need one. Well, what, what, what happened? It looked like they needed a coach in, in this series and, and they didn't have and they didn't have a coach. And then you know, Steve Nash. Look, look who you brought in. You brought in Mike D'Antoni to be your assistant. I, I don't last time I checked, Mike D'Antoni ain't got no championship trophies in his career, unless he got them from Italy or something from back in the day. But I know he ain't got none from, from the NBA. So you know, I think you know, decisions that 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 could have been made differently kind of affected uh the, the Nets. And then, you know, and I, I posted a clip. Uh, right after they lost the game from when we had shout out to the Bowlers Journal to uh to, to Aaron and, and Lawrence. And I was just saying, I was worried that they were going to burn James Harden out um, because it was pretty much James Harden during the regular season. We, Durant had like two months off with injury. Kyrie was taking days off whenever he wanted to. So James Harden, yeah, he was he was carrying the load, and that was and, and that's why it was even a discussion about Harden being the MVP because of how much he was doing for the Nets during the regular season. And then, sure enough, we get to round two. And he don't even make it a minute into the into the game, and he's hurt because you don't burnt him out. You know, much props to him though because I respect the the, the fact that he came back and played because he shouldn't have even been playing uh, when he did. And even in Game Seven, you know, I know he shot poorly, but the man almost had a triple double on 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 one and a half legs. Facts. You know what I mean? So you know, I just want to I just want to give James Harden props because I I usually I get at James Harden in the playoffs with you know, without a second thought, just because I know he hasn't come to play. And once you get to the late in the second round, he 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 kind of withers away. So I get yeah. him all the time. But I wanted to, I, I want to give James Harden his props though for coming back and, and doing what he could in this situation. Um, Joe Harris, you got to do better though, man. I'm sorry, you 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 gave us nothing in that entire yeah. series, nothing. Yeah. You got to yeah. do better. And it, and it's sad. Yeah. It's they, sad. They Gotta 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 log that many minutes, but you called it like he got burnt out. That hamstring, only way you really like pull a hamstring besides tweaking and turning is just overplaying the muscles. You always working yourself, you know what I mean? And um and and because you that's that's the that's the downfall of getting a um a big three. You don't have no you don't have nothing else. You don't have a bench. You don't have a a major this and major that. And that's what you that's what we seen. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, but play playoff minutes are high intensity minutes. And so mm-hmm. remember, he 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 had missed 20 games leading into the playoffs. So he didn't even get a chance to really get his conditioning right. And that's why you saw it happen so early. They're gonna have a lot of tough decisions next year because Spencer Denwitty already said he's gonna opt out of his contract. Um, and I think they gotta bring him back. They need that type of depth, they need that that additional ball handling and scorer off the bench. And you're paying Joe Harris damn near 15 million dollars a year. He gotta give mm-hmm. you more. He was supposed to be a sharpshooter from the corner, he never really showed up. Um, I give a lot of respect to James Harden to play the amount of minutes he played on one leg and he out there taking on the challenge of guarding Giannis without help. You know, we saw many a time where he's pushing off the help, like, nah, I got it. Don't worry about it. You know, so he gave him everything he had. I think Blake gave him a lot too. I was, I was surprised how much Blake really gave him. 
Because when they picked him up, I didn't think he had this much left in the tank. But he was another guy who was taking on the challenge of playing Giannis one on one. They got to get healthy. They got to get. They got to get a little more depth on their bench. Talent wise, we know they're great, but they gonna have some obstacles to overcome next year. Definitely. Yeah. No. That, yeah. Absolutely. There's nothing else you can say, man. Um. Outside. I mean, other than that, you know, they had a good good season. It was fun while it lasted, but you know, it, it really injuries just kicked their butts because Durant, Harden. You know, we can go. We can even go back. And when they had LeBron's Aldridge for about a week before he had to, he had to retire. You, you forget him. LeBron's Aldridge would have been on this team too. That would have been wow. somebody that in this situation could have really mm-hmm. helped out because he's somebody that's been there before, been been in the playoffs year after year after year. So he would have been somebody that could have definitely helped. Jeff Green missed the first half of the series. He came back in at that one really good performance where he where he dropped the uh, the twenty seven points. But you know, after that, we didn't we didn't see see him anymore. And then Kyrie goes down. You know, everybody just seemed to get hurt. Um, but you know what? I agree with you, with you, with you, with you, uh, Larry, because this is that humbling experience that they needed. Because we Absolutely. we all crown them. Oh, they 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 got Kyrie and KD is over. But then they brought in James Harden. That's really over. They oh, they they got this. They got this. They got this. And they don't got this. Yeah. Couldn't, even, couldn't even get past past the Bucks in the, in the, in the second round. So clearly, you didn't have it. Um, you know, and, and Kevin Durant was a was a, a was amazing, but at the same time, I'm just like, you know what? It, if it came down to being one superstar versus one superstar, and you better than than Giannis, I think you should have still still got it done. You know, I, I can't I can't just let him off the hook, even though he played it exceptionally well. But when we got these other it's, 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 it's like I played that long before. Like I played hard and I had nothing left to give. Like I could only, I could only imagine. And then you know I'm playing in high school, college ball, and playing that much without the high tech. You know they got IVs to help them out. They got certain. I'm drinking Gatorade and water, trying to. I played that long, and it takes a lot. So you understand? Yeah. I do agree with you. He should have got it done. It could have been a better way to get it done. I don't even care if we would have drove the lane. And you went to the line. That's why, once again, that's why I'm a Michael Jordan fan. Because when Mike was tired, he driving the lane. You're going to force you and call a foul, or you're going to yeah. give me a layup. And KD was 0 for 6 in overtime. So I got, like, I yeah, got, I got, I got to talk about that. Yeah, but it, it's not, it's not a completely fair criticism, though, because, again, the amount of minutes that he's logging, and, again, to Steve Nash and experience, he basically was giving KD the ball at the top of the key and saying, bail us out. Every possession was KD with the ball at the top of the key, either having to get his own shot or get someone else's shot. To, to Giannis' benefit, there were moments where Chris Middleton could get you possessions. There were moments where even though Drew Holiday didn't look good in game seven, Drew Holiday had about three straight possessions where he got them buckets where they didn't have to go to Giannis. So there was difference in, in, in the amount of help the two guys were getting. And again, Steve Nash didn't help him out because at least come up with a little bit of a strategy. At least give me moments where I can catch a breather on offense where I don't have the ball so much in my hands. I mean... Listen, game five is one of the greatest playoff performances we've ever seen. It took every bit of the 49-point triple-double that KD had for them to win. If KD would have just had 40 points, they lose. They needed all 49. And in game seven, he gives them 48, and they lose in overtime again. If he just goes for 40, they lose. So I think KD did everything he could. He just didn't have as much help. And that's not to say Coach Bud was great in this series. I don't think Coach Bud was great either. But there were moments where Middleton got him buckets, where Drew Holiday got him buckets, where even Brooke Lopez got him some buckets, and those are things that KD just wasn't getting from his teammates. No, he he did, but but so so here's here's, here's my thing, right? So we can't hold other superstars accountable when they got to do more to carry the load. But then when Kevin Durant has the issue, we're gonna let him off the hook. I can't do that because we'll sit up here and oh LeBron didn't get the job done, but this guy wasn't there, this guy this this and that, and we still gonna give LeBron that flack, right? So KD. And, and we're talking about LeBron going up against a three superstar team dealing with all these injuries. You went up against Giannis, who who one superstar versus one superstar, and you didn't get it done. Like I'm not I'm not trying to hear that over six in, in, in overtime. I'm sorry. The same way we hold, hold other superstars accountable, we are gonna hold you accountable too. You should have won that series. It shouldn't even got to seven games. I don't care. If, but if, but if, think about I what you said. There. Think about what you said at the start of this segment, though. If 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 his shoe size was two inches smaller and they went on that three, we not even debating whether he could go one on one against. But that ain't happened, so we, we got to hold him accountable. 
That <laughs> we, did not happen. We would have been praised and been like, yo, he gave us yes, another 40 I, piece. I, I, and I would, it would. I would have. If, if he, if he, if his foot was behind the line, I would have came on this show the same way, supporting my nets and been like, yeah, he did. He did what he was supposed to do in that situation. Whoa, whoa, whoa. But that out. didn't happen. Time out. He did say supporting his nets. He just said, he said it. He said. You heard that, right, Mike? When did they become your nets, Trip? I was a Brooklyn Now they your nets? <laughs> Hey, ben, now they your nets? No, 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 We're not going to do that because don't act, we're not going to sit up here and act like I have not said that I support the nets because I'm from Brooklyn. We're not you gonna support like them because they're from Brooklyn, yes. yes. But hold on, I thought you were under contract with the Lakers. I am, but I still want to support so how they them. You can't say they your nets, though. It's because it's a Brooklyn thing. You don't understand that. You're not from Brooklyn. You can't, oh, can't, about, you can't understand that. Hold on, hold on. That's like me saying, I, I'm a I'm a lifelong Met fan. You know that. That's like me saying, my Yankees, when they get into the playoffs. You're going to be like, hold on, bro. You can't uh, be claiming them now. It's different. Just say you, this. You got issues with the Yankees. I don't have issues with the Mets. <laughs> Let me say this. Here's a situation, Rob. And I agree with you. We're not going to take, we're not going to put, or, or put Kevin Durant off the hook or let him off the hook, right? Um to put, and I'm talking about LeBron and KD, they're in the same caliber of superstar, right? All-star, um, the same caliber. My thing is, Kevin Durant played all 50 some minutes. Meanwhile, you got LeBron over here talking about sub me out. You ain't no sub out. It's, you, you're either gonna play or you or you not. You understand? So that's where- Are we my, talking about 37 my... year old LeBron or are we talking about 32 year old LeBron says sub out? Cause I don't believe when, when LeBron was KD's age, you weren't talking about no sub out. But I'm, but I'm saying you gotta look at the caliber of the team. They don't when they mention LeBron and KD, don't nobody ever mention age. They mention the talent that's on the floor. You feel what I'm saying? You we 37. LeBron, listen, I get it. You 37. Kevin Durant even be around with all the injuries he's accumulating at 37 and playing on. Well, and I was gonna say this to Mike. I was gonna say this to Mike's point though, right? Sorry, if you want to throw age into it, then we got to take into account that this is KD's first season back from an Achilles injury. So most guys coming back from an Achilles. Ain't not trying to play 50, 50 plus minutes. They not even playing 40 minutes. And that's why you should so we call take that into account find out who he's paying that million and a half to every year to get his body right to make him last to 37 to where he could say, yo, take me out for a second at 37. Nah, you don't get out the game. I don't pay you to get out the game, LeBron. I need you right now. You feel what I'm saying? We try, first of all, you in the seventh series. You was the man that, that praised the playing game and the same man that praised the playing game is now criticizing the playing game. You won that game because you seen three rims because you got poked in the eye. He's a, he's just dramatic for me. You seen three rims, you got poked in the eye, you won the game because you shot the middle rim. Congratulations. Now you're talking about taking me out the game because I'm tired or I got a lot. Meanwhile, KD, you see the tiredness, but he's like, I'm not. None of us as sports players was taught to tell our coach to take us out the game. We always taught to stick it out. So when LeBron didn't, and I'm a LeBron fan when it comes to what he I really don't care for his skill of the game. I respect him because he's doing a lot. You know what I mean? But I respect the fact that he does a lot on the floor. But that right there at 37, you just seen all the time catch up. You feel what I'm saying? But well, he's also, that's neither here also injured too. Absolutely. So uh, it's, Absolutely. it's not like we, we, it wasn't like he didn't have an injury this season. He came in, was good to go. And then, and then we're calling, you know, he needed a second off the court. He's playing injured. Yeah, but and, listen, and, and LeBron had help too with, with, with KCP. KCP showed up every night. You know what I mean? Like he got hurt uh, and missed like two games too, though. I agree. You know what I'm saying? But I'm talking about when it counted, when he was in the game that day, when he came back, he he he, he showed up. You feel what I'm saying? All I'm saying is that we. Nah, I, but I'm, I'm ready to get rid of him too, though. I'm I'm ready to defend him too. I'm not I mean, you ready to get I, everybody? I'll say this. Ready to get him on the team, baby. Ready to get him up yeah. out of there. Trip, trip, trading everybody except the two main guys. He getting everybody else up out of there. Exactly. He treated like he treated like a two K all season. I tell you everybody what, is thing, gone. <laughs> the best thing that ever happened to the Lakers was was, was Schroeder thinking he was gonna bet on himself and get a higher payday and mess himself up because now you ain't even gonna get the eighty eight million they was offering your ass. Not a nice. chance. I, and, and we're gonna use this to to, to segue to the next uh, game seven, but. It's one thing, and and I, I didn't criticize LeBron the way they lost because I thought LeBron left it all on the floor. The same thing with KD. And not he too much, Derek. You know, when, I, when I say that, I mean the media. I know. I know, yeah, there's certain... But we know those are certain talking heads who want to generate a headline or, or grab your attention for clickbait, and they'll say things like that. But if you watch the game, and obviously all three of us watched the games, we knew LeBron gave everything he could at that moment, yeah. right? The same thing with KD, like... 
when KD air balls that three at the end of the game, we knew he ain't got no legs, bro. The dude been on the court so long. He, he he's giving you everything he got is nothing left in the tank. The whole now there's a certain, there's a certain, and we're going to use this to segue. There's a certain six ten point guard who I don't believe left everything on the court. I don't believe he left everything on the court. Let's get to it. Let's get so to let's it. Let's get to it. I can't wait to talk about this one right here. There's no way you 6'10". <laughs> Big Ben. Big Ben. Big Ben. Big Ben. Big ben. So here's the deal, man. I was I was at Rucker today, and I'm calling the game. And there was a kid, right, who went, had an open layup, and passed it. And I said, hey, yo, Ben Simmons, did you not see the basket? And, and, and I had to let him know. And I went right to his coach. I'm like, what are you teaching him in practice? Because there's no way. I don't remember my coach. My coach said, you get to the rim, either you dunk it or you let him get, get a bucket. Yeah. You understand? And, and, and because you were scared to shoot the ball, you understand? Like, Ben Sim, I've been saying this since he came out of college. If you don't shoot the ball, your career is going to be short in the NBA. I think about Darnell, uh, Darnell Marshall. Play for the, the 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 and James Jones, those type of guys, wasn't athletic, but they had long careers because they could shoot the ball. Yeah, you shoot. You got. You're a point guard. You got to shoot. Like I look at. You know who, who remind me of? Like Rondo. Rondo wasn't a knockdown shooter, but Rondo was aggressive every time. And he wasn't afraid of the moment. He wasn't afraid, afraid to, to shoot the ball. And that's all I ask. You understand? But you, you can't shoot the ball. He's frustrated. He, 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 he frustrates me if I'm gonna be a lefty and me be a lefty. I'd be frustrated like. Oh man, you're doing us filthy right now. <laughs> you gotta shoot the ball. And he didn't leave. I don't think he left everything on the court. And it's sad as you being one of the top 10 superstars in the league, you understand, or all stars in the league, you understand, for your coach to have to take you out the game during crunch time. I used to hate when my coach take me out the game. Like, coach, what did I do something wrong? What happened? Now I put him back in the game. I met one time me and my high school coach got into an argument. You feel what I'm saying? Because he had took me out the game. I'm like, yo, I'm shooting 90% from the free throw line. Either they're gonna give me a layup or they're gonna they gonna foul me. He was like, you know what, you're right. Get back in the game. What are you taking me out for? You know what I mean? Well, you got full fouls. I don't care. Put me in the game. You understand? And and that's the stuff that bothers me about Ben Simmons. The kid, I think, has a great upside. But when is that upside going? When are you going to reach his ceiling? When are you going to reach his mark? That's that. The fu- it frustrated me to watch that game, man. To the, the watch the Come series on, as a whole, really. Um, you know, and, and I get, you know, I'm, I'm not even a person where it's like, oh, Ben Simmons, he because first of all, he don't shoot the three, he won't do this. Listen, I don't I don't care how you score your points. I'm not one of these people that says you need to work on worry about your three or the, the jump shot. I don't care if you go to the basket 40 times a game and you get all layups and dunks as long as you score. There's no reason that Ben Simmons should not should have averaged nine points a game in this series and you're six ten. And you can handle the ball like you can. You you can you can get to the basket like a Giannis, like a LeBron. If anytime you choose to, there's pretty much a mis, mismatch on you every time you have the basketball. And he just would not shoot it. And I'm just hoping. I'm like, all right, game six he's gonna step up. I'm like, all right, he ain't step up in game six, but but game seven he gonna come to play because that's it. He's want to go home and he didn't come up. But that when when he had that, that a wide open lane to dunk the basketball and didn't. I said, you know what? I give up. That's it. So I, I don't know. I don't know what what can we do. You know, much respect for making the all all defensive team, and that's great. But th- that's not what what your team needed right now because it wasn't even like I mean, Trey Young was still out there doing whatever he wanted to do anyway. So at that point, it's just like I, I don't even know what to say to Ben Simmons. Like it's this is it's not the team for Ben Simmons. I don't think that they can win with with Joel and Bede and Ben Simmons together. One of those guys has to go, um, you know, it got to be somebody that's, that's not afraid to shoot because they need some more, more shooters out there. That's what they needed. They needed some scoring and they could, they didn't get that from, from the point guard position. Absolutely. And, and I want to, I want to give you a couple, couple numbers that highlight both the points y'all made. Right. So Ben Simmons is a three-time all-star in game five, six, and seven combined. He shot the ball 14 times, three games. I kid you not. Three games with your season on the line. Remember, they were tied 2-2 after, the four, after four games. You shot the ball 14 times total. Yeah. Also, Ben Simmons just shot 33% from the free throw line for the entire playoffs. It's the lowest in NBA history. The lowest in NBA history. 33% Yo, from the free throw line. That's right? Bad. 
Yeah. It's, it's terrible. It's terrible. And one last point I want to make, because Tripp and I, on live TV, we had this debate when he won the rookie of the year. I was steadfast that Donovan Mitchell should have won it. I thought that Ben Simmons had an unfair advantage because he got to redshirt that first year before actually playing. He got to travel with the team. He got to kind of learn what the NBA life was like before hitting the court. Donovan Mitchell didn't have that advantage. Donovan Mitchell had to jump right in. Oh, by the way, Gordon Hayward had just left Utah. So Donovan Mitchell jumped right into being the main player on the Utah Jazz and put up better numbers, I felt, than Ben Simmons. But my point being to that, that discussion that Tripp and I had was that Ben Simmons had that whole year off from coming in from LSU to actually playing his first year in the NBA and didn't practice his jump shooting at all. And oh, that, yeah. to me, that let me know everything I needed to know. Cause you already been around the whole game for a whole year. And not one time did you think, yo, let me work on my game. Let me, let me get a little mid range shot. Let me get a little corner three to make you respect it. As, as much as we may criticize what Giannis does shooting the ball, Giannis will at least shoot two to three threes a game to force you to respect it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It may not look pretty. It, it may not go in most of the time, but he's going to at least say, look, you're going to respect the shot. And to your point, Mike, Rondo's the same way. Rondo has never been a knockdown three-point shooter. But if Rondo sees that you're disrespecting it off the pick and roll, I'm shooting this. I'm going I'm to make you respect my game. Yeah. Ben Simmons, I don't know if it's just mental. I don't know if it's, it requires a change of scenery. But to me, he might be damaged goods at this point. The skills are there. Don't get me wrong. The skills are there. But... Mm -hmm. When he sat there after the game yesterday and said, it's me, I got to get my mental right. That to me is like, bro, hold on. That's a red flag. I don't want to hear that at this point. That's a, that's a, that's a yeah. excuse. You and, know what I mean? and I think it's very unfortunate because when they hired Doc Rivers, I was really high on this team. I thought this was a team that could compete with the Nets. I thought that that's what they needed. I thought Brent Brown, the former coach, wasn't the right guy for Embiid and Simmons. Doc Rivers... I, I think you could see what he did for Embiid because Embiid this year came in in his shape and was an MVP candidate. And Embiid did everything he could. On one leg, he out there averaging 30 plus points a game in the second round of the playoffs with a torn meniscus. Yeah. If you're paying Ben Simmons to be your second best player, he got to play like your second best player. I don't care if you go five for 20 shooting the ball, shoot the damn ball. Yeah. Play aggressive and stay aggressive the whole game. And the last number I'm going to give y'all is to the sixes and why this all fell apart. The Sixers got three guys on their team that were all NBA defense. And yet, four times in the series, they had a lead of at least 18 points. Two times, they blew that lead. So oh, wow. there's, there's issues on this team that need to be addressed in this offseason. Not just Ben, but in general. Something ain't right with this team. And I don't know if they're ever going to reach their potential until they fully address it. There's the other part to that, to that Eric. And, and that's why I can't, I can't just let Doc Rivers completely off the hook. Because... Ben Simmons wasn't even taking the basketball. Like there was times where he'd get rid of the ball before he even hit the half court line during this series. So it's like, so if I'm Doc Rivers, I, like I'm driving it in your head. And if you're not going to do it, then I got to bench you because it's the playoffs and ain't no more, ain't no do overs, no second chances. I want the ball in Ben Simmons' hands every time up the court. Go to the basket. Just keep driving in, driving in. Somebody's going to be wide open. Or you're going to make a layup. You're 6'10". You're going to dunk the basketball. You're 6'10". He, 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 ha he has a good enough handle. He can, he can run the floor, but he just was not – he wasn't even trying to take the ball, let alone shoot, shoot the, the basketball. He didn't even want it. I, I, Joel Embiid, it was one play, Joel Embiid ran the floor, ran all the way down, got to the basket. But I'm, and I'm just and like, no, oh, he doesn't even want to touch the ball. He's giving it up to Seth Curry. That's, that's cool. But, no, you have to have – you're the point guard on his team. You need to be running the show. And he wasn't doing that. And that I have to put on – Doc Rivers' shoulders, because if you're not going to have the ball in your hand, I'm, I'm sorry, I got to bench you. It ain't like you helping us out offensively anyway. And defensively, you know, we, we, we got another guy that's on the all, all defensive team that can guard the perimeter if, if that's if that if, if need be. Um, so I got I to gotta hold Doc Rivers a little bit accountable too. That's a great point because it's, it's an excellent point because if you look at the way they closed out game six, they closed it out with Maxi. They, they let Tyrese Maxey run the point because he was aggressive in game six and said, look, if Ben ain't going to shoot, go ahead. And then in game seven, I think, I, I guess, Doc got scared of pulling him. I don't know. But again, something needs to be addressed with that. Now, that's a definite fact. You know, we all got that saying. Remember that saying, man, you got one job, man. You got, like, he got one job. Like, just work on your, like, I think about um, 
and maybe it's the generation of players. I'm thinking about uh, uh, Isaiah Thomas from Detroit Pistons back in the day when he had tore his ligament in his wrist. And that's because he shot a thousand shots a day. So you just, he's just working. He was just working. He was there shooting on the off season. You tear your, your ligament. Now you got to get surgery. That's why they couldn't three peat. You know what I mean? That year. But it's just, you know, you, you work, man. You got to work. You feel what I'm saying? And for you to say that it's me, it's my mental, my man, you, you've been around the game long enough to be in the gym. You understand? Like I, I've never really understood people that make that excuse. You understand? Along with Doc Rivers. You understand my man, but you know, he ain't working. If you're not working, then have a seat. You know what I mean? Have a seat. I, I don't. I can't stand people who don't work. You can have a seat. Go sit down somewhere and, to, and then we find someone who's gonna put the work in. Simple. Yeah. There's not. You're not. You're not really a starter then. You can't. Cause if I can't. If I can't count on you, I don't even need you in my starting lineup. That really. I, like I don't need you on my team. If I'm paying I, you all that much money, <laughs> like collect these splinters at the end of the bench. And big shout out to um my man Seth Curry. I think he. I think he. Oh, yes. He, he, I think he hooked his way into a, a contract. You know what I mean? That man put work in. And besides him being Seth Curry, younger brother, Steph Curry, son of Dale Curry, you still, I don't care about the name. You still got to put the work in. And he put the work in. And, and shout out to him, man. Without him, they wouldn't even be in the series, I think. You know what I'm saying? You guys see, they're not even in the series. You understand? 1,000% 1, correct, bro. You feel what I'm saying? That, that, he put that work in. So they got to renegotiate. Or figure it out because that man hooped his way into a bigger contract. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and and somebody who, who need to give their check back too is Tobias Harris. Tobias, back. Tobias Harris, I hate to say it, you know what I'm saying? I, I know he 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 from New York, but the way he played in this series, you being paid to be, if not the second best player, the third best player on his team. And like you said, without Seth Curry, this series would have been over early because Seth and Joel was the only two that to me looked like they showed up the ball. Yeah, and, and, and B was hurt. So I yeah. can't. I got, I got, I, listen, I give Embiid all, all the props in the world because we're used to him going down and staying and staying down. But, you know, he, he fought through that injury and it wasn't a subpar Embiid. It was 30 and, and 11, 30 and 12, damn near every, every game of this series. So I got to give Embiid his credit. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, man, they, they, they got to move some things around. They got to change something. I, I, I was never really big on Tobias Harris. Uh, you know, I mean, I, again, I know he's from the town, so we got to try, try to show that love and support. But I just wasn't never really big on him anyway. Like, I didn't think he was in that caliber of the up, upper echelon of players in the league. But, I mean, if you're going to say he's, he's the third best player on your team, then all right, then that's that's fine. But, you know, he was playing like the third best player, but he should he's supposed to be that second scorer. But, you know, but he Steph Curry just he, he took over that 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 second score role. And, you know, the rest of those guys, it was just like, you know, what are we doing out here? It's all, all right. it's going down here. And that's it. And they, and they lost. Shout out to to Atlanta, Trey Young, Collins. Um, you know, those guys step up. I heard of, oh, my goodness, that that brother oh into the last the last two games, he turned the switch on like he did what Joe Harris was supposed to be doing for the Nets. That's what he was doing for the for the Hawks. You know, um, because they lost uh, DeAndre Hunter, he had got he wound up getting hurt. Um, mm -hmm. but he but Herder stepped right in, and he was he was big because even in that in that last game, game seven was probably Trey Young's only, and I I don't want to say bad game because he still had a, a double double, but in comparison to the, the numbers that he was putting up, that was his his only down game in the series. But but Herder stepped up, and 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 that's why you know they they won that game seven because those role players did what they were supposed to do. When guys are out, you step up. When it's your, when your number is called, you got to go in there and do what you're supposed to do. You can't be afraid of the moment. Like, you're in the NBA for a reason. And if you're trying to ascend to that superstar level, and I'm going to transition like my, like my man Devin Booker has, has done, you, you got to show and prove in these moments. But let's uh, let's jump over to Phoenix right now, up 1-0 in the Western Conference Finals. I know Kawhi is out, but Chris Paul is also out uh, uh, for, for the Sun. So it's, it's pretty much evened out uh the series but yeah. Devin Booker has arrived uh he's letting it be known that I'm here now and there's nothing you could do with me it was a 40 point triple double in game one just to let y'all know this ain't this ain't just a, a CP3 thing anymore we I have improved man. and we ready ready to get to the finals yeah big shout out to Devin Booker big shout out to CP3 who I had number two in my MVP voting I had I had CP3 there's no way you go from a 400 winning percentage last year 
two or seven oh six, I think it was. They said winning percentage this year. There's no way you don't make the playoffs last year, and now you number two in the playoffs. So big shout out to CP3. Um, I'm a little apprehensive of how you even in the COVID protocol with my man um, LBJ had a whole party with Drake and was able to play his playing game with no protocol. But that's neither here or there. Well, in um, his defense, Chris Paul actually tested positive for, for COVID though. So he has to. He had to stay out. There was no way. And I kind of believe that. I kind of. I kind of figured that's what the situation was. Um. Uh. So big shout out to Devin Booker. Like I, I knew Devin Booker was a bucket when they went eight and zero in the bubble last year and didn't make the playoffs. Like he was. He just needed someone else to run the to run the team. You understand? Because that's not his role. He's not somebody that runs the team. He's the person that if you need to a bucket, he's gonna get you a bucket. Yeah. CP three is a person, and and, and they they gave praise to. D book, aka um Devin uh Devin Buckets. I call him Devin Buckets. Um uh, uh DeAndre Aiden, um um campaign, pain or whatever. I, I I believe those guys made they gave uh, CP3 the credit. They said, yo, listen, it's more than what he does in a basketball court. It's off the court what he does. It's his work ethic, it's him talking, it's him communicating, it's him um taking care of his body. Like that stuff right there, it translates. Until 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 your players like I tell a player all the time, anybody I'm talking to, when, whether it be sports, is look at your coach. If your players get rattled, chances are it's because the coach don't have no composure. That's why I'm, that's why Phil Jackson for me was that guy because it's like he's never seen nervous, and his players took on that 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 attribute, like that characteristic. Like we're not getting nervous, you understand? And, and and that's what I see. Anybody that get nervous, you see, you see Steve Nash, see what his team did based on it. I only take on the characteristics of what you're being taught. You understand? But Devin Booker has arrived. He's been waiting for this moment. He said it too. He said, listen, I've been waiting for this all my life. I had put up a video of uh, a little reel and I used his voiceover talking about, um, I've waited for this moment. You understand? Or oh, I'm working on the, the, the reel. I've waited for this moment. He's waited for this moment and this moment has come and he's not like Ben Simmons who's going, not, he's going to step up to the plate. You understand? So Devin Booker is that guy. I've always been a fan of him in Kentucky. I don't think that is just due in Kentucky because he played with a lot of stars, but now you're seeing what he could have been doing and how he's doing it. You understand? So um, I really, I really hope CP3 come back, man, because I, I, I got them. I got them going to the finals. I want them to go to the finals. I want CP to get a ring, even though Milwaukee Bucks is the healthiest team in the league. I, I mean, in the remaining in the playoffs at the moment. Um, uh, uh, and, and but D Book, he's showing up to play. You know, what I mean, shout out to Crowder. Crowder, what Crowder? Because if I'm not mistaken, Crowder was on the Heat last year, correct? Yeah. Yep. If Crowder would have been playing how he's playing now, the Heat would have beat the Lakers. I'm not going to me, with it. I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm only saying that. I'm only saying that because he didn't. You only had Jimmy Butler was the only one that showed up. If you ask me, well, you know what I mean. Bam showed up. You understand? They just needed one more person. Like now, you got Cam. You got Cam showing up. You got Crowder showing up. You got Aiden showing up. You got D Book showing up. So CP3 don't have to do much with a messed up shoulder. And these are it wants to and to credit to Shaq, big shout out to Shaquille O'Neal. He always say, in order for you to win championships, you need the others to step up. These are the others that every team needs. You know what I'm saying? So D Book has these others showing up and it's making it a lot more easier for him to really get off how he's getting off because it got the respect to go to and what Eric was saying. You may you gotta respect everybody else. You understand? If you don't, if they don't respect you, it's like I don't know really care too much. And these guys just have to respect it, and D Book is able to go work. If let me ask y'all this, if if uh Phoenix wins the championship this year. Where is Chris Paul ranked all time amongst point guards? Active uh, I mean, point guards or all time? All time. All, all time. All time. I mean, it's a tough list, especially with the way we view point guards now, because a lot of these guys are more combo guards than traditional point guards. But for me personally, I think Chris Paul is in that top three discussion. I mean, he's he's a winner everywhere he's gone. You know, yeah. the numbers show that every every organization he's gone to, he's made them better. And a chip would just solidify that um, his standing. Uh, Mike, I, I want to go back to the point you made. In, in all fairness to Jay, because I actually like Jay Crowder a lot. Last year, the, the issue with Miami, not to say they was going to beat the Lakers, but remember, Bam went out and Dragic went out in that series. So they wasn't Great. completely healthy. But LeBron didn't tweet about those injuries then. He, he, he forgot <laughs> about them injuries. He didn't talk about those injuries. That was different. But, uh, <laughs> 
I had to throw the jab at you, Trip, because I, oh, you know, but but no, no. Um, but in all fairness, though, I I have a tremendous amount of respect for everything CP3 and what Monty Williams is doing with that Phoenix team because, like you said, with the bubble when they went eight and zero, I love what Monty said to the team after. And like you said, you take on the persona of your coach, and mm. he addressed them when they went eight and zero and they just missed the playing game. He said, "Look." Don't let this define us. This is just one stepping stone to what's greater for us. What were we working towards? And they took on that mindset and you can see it. Book to me at this point, we got to start talking about him as one of the top 10, top 12 players in the league because now it's not just regular season stats. Now it's playoff dominance. Like mm -hmm. he went into that game against the Lakers. He knew they was wounded. And what he did, he said, I'm, a, I'm in attack mode from, from the tip. I'm going I'm in attack mode. Other stuff. I'm working fast. Right. I'm, I'm not giving y'all a second chance to even get back in this series. I'm going all in. And he was phenomenal in that game. And then yesterday, or oh, two nights ago, I should say, all right, Phoenix, we going, we ain't got CP3, but they ain't got Kawhi. So I'm going all, I'm going right at the Clippers from start. I know they shooting the ball good, but guess what? I'm Devin Booker. I'm shooting the ball well as well. So I give him a lot of credit. I think DeAndre Ayton has really grown up too. You know, he's, he's a guy that we don't talk about as much because the big man isn't as relevant anymore, but he's been really good in these playoffs. And Cameron Payne has been giving them good minutes. One of the things I thought that was going to hamper them was I didn't think they were deep enough. But the the way Cameron Payne's been playing, the, the minutes they've been getting from uh, Cam Johnson and from Mikel Bridges, it's like, all right, now maybe I do got enough, man. And, and Monty's a really good coach. They're going to be tough. No matter what happens in this series, they're going to be tough because they're playing with a certain level of confidence. They already have a swagger about them that they feel not only they belong, they feel they're the best team on the court. And they're going to be better moving forward, too, because – DeAndre Ayton is probably two seasons away from getting to his prime. So mm -hmm. they're going to continue to improve as DeAndre Ayton gets better um, because I think he can turn into a dominant big man in this league, especially just looking at the way he's, he's, he's he plays both sides of the basketball. Um, and I just think getting that, that experience under his belt now um, on the on the on the deep playoff run that they're on, I think they'll they're gonna be one of those solidified playoff teams for like the next five six years, while and maybe even longer because because again we're talking about two guys that are what under twenty six years old yeah. between Aiden and, 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 and Devin Booker, and then um, and then you throw and you throw Mikel Bridges on there who's twenty five. Like I said, they they got a yeah. really good young nucleus of guys. Yep. So that, I think they can they can be good for for a, a long time. Um, and again, CP3, I think he's, he's one, he, he definitely jumps up the, the all-time list if, if he wins a championship, because a lot of times we hold a guy not having a ring against him and, and we'll push him down a lot on the list. Cause he don't, he, he doesn't have that ring. And then Chris Paul doesn't have MVP. So if he can get, if he can get the ring, I think a lot of guys will start looking at Chris Paul a little bit different. Cause now it's like, all right, well, he got the ring. Um, he's consistent every year. He is he is a winner, like you said. Wherever he's going, he he has he he knows how to win games, and he just found his niche in Phoenix. You know, yeah. so hopefully and they respect him to be that guy. You understand? Like they they respect him. Like they don't want him to be D Booker. They don't want him to be the, that guy that's gonna get him a bucket. But they expect him to be. They respect him to be <laughs> that guy. Like yo, you know what? We respect what you bring to the table. Give us everything that you got, and he's willing to teach. Like that's another thing. He's willing to be like, you know what? Everything that you need to learn, I'm going to teach you. You understand? I'm not going to hold back. I'm going to give you everything you need to learn. And there's a lot of players that don't do that. You understand? And and, and that's the sucky ducky part. But uh, he's doing that, man. And big shout out to CP3. I'm a fan, man. I'm a, I'm a, I've always been a fan since Wake, for, Wake Forest. So I've been a fan since, since CP3. And I want him to, I really want him to get one. You understand? He don't need five. He just need one in my book. He get one, he going to be all right with me. If he don't get it, he's still all right with me because he's such a great leader. He's still, he's still a Hall of Famer, you know. Oh yeah. With, with or without a championship ring, but you know, for the, for those for those voters that that might want to hold it against him, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because he doesn't have one. At least if he can get one this year, mm -hmm. that'll really help him solidify his legacy. Yeah, I, both of you guys have the Suns winning this series. Yeah, but especially if Kawhi is not is not coming back, you know. Yeah, if Kawhi don't come back. I, I got the signs. If Kawhi come back, I got the Clippers. Because we, I mean, because because if Kawhi don't come back, we really talking about a big three versus Paul George. Yeah. So I just I, I don't I, I don't I, see that that matchup going going any differently than it did in Game One. 
And then yeah, yeah, Paul I, I really back. wish both teams were healthy. I wish both teams were healthy because I think it's a really good matchup. I, I like both coaches a lot. I'm a big fan of Ty Lue because Ty Lue always makes really good adjustments in series adjustments. I'm holding out hope for the Clippers to get that to get that opportunity. But I think you, you guys might be right, man. If Kawhi doesn't play, that's a lot to ask PG to take on the load um, against this Phoenix team that, that just has a lot of talent. Yeah, and, and where are they going to be if Kawhi comes back? Because I, I don't think Kawhi is coming. If he, if he comes back... I doubt it'd be before game four. So from, from what I've heard, from what I've heard, so the, the injury from what I heard is a hyperextension. And so that's why they haven't ruled him out for the playoffs because they're holding out hope that he can come back, like you said, for game three or game four um, back when they're in LA. But even still with the hyperextension, you got to wonder like what type of explosion and, and burst is he going to have? You know, is he going to trust the knee or is he going to be a little timid? Um, but same thing could go for CP3 because coming back from COVID, every athlete handles it differently. You know, some guys come back and it looks like they never left. And then other guys, it takes them a little while to get their conditioning back because they haven't been able to work out while they deal with the symptoms. So that it'll be interesting either way. From, from, from COVID, he never right. he never got that got that energy. It wasn't his condition. It wasn't never the same from throughout the playoffs. You could tell he was completely different. Hopefully, you know, Chris Paul is different. But, you know, again, Chris Paul is, is, is also someone who's been somewhat injury prone as well. So I don't know how this is going to affect his health moving forward because he's going to have to play a little bit differently if his condition is not up to par, which could lead to something else happening. So, you know, we got to wait and see. I hope it doesn't like, I really hope that Chris Paul stays healthy because I think he deserves this opportunity to play for a championship. And I think this may be the best chance that he's going to have. Um, I don't know if next year they be, they'll be able to, to get back, because if everybody's healthy in the Western Conference, then it's going to be a lot harder. The gauntlet with a healthy Western Conference is a lot harder than when you got AD out and you got uh, Clay Thomas is out, out for the year. And now you're going to go up against a Clippers team without Kawhi for, for possibly half, but maybe even this whole series. You know what I mean? So... I'm going to give CP3 a call tonight and see what's up. You got to figure this out. We'll talk to him. Yeah, I mean, yeah, storyline wise, it makes sense. It is lining up for him to get that storybook ending. And not to say this is the end of his career, but just that moment. You know what I'm saying? But I would hate for his play to be hampered by COVID because, you know, the biggest what if in his career is that series a couple years ago against Golden State when it was up 3 2 and he gets injured in game five. Because no matter what side you, no matter what team you thought was going to win that series, it's it's always going to be that cloud that hangs over it. Like, yo, but they was up 3-2. And if, if Paul stays healthy, maybe they they knock off KD and the Warriors. You know what I'm saying? And so I would hate for them, for the work they've put in to get to this point. And then, you know, COVID strikes and now it's like, oh, he misses three games. And then when he comes back, he ain't the same now because the conditioning is off. So I, I hope he gets back on the court as quickly as possible. Fortunately for them, they 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 got a band out there that, that Mike Lowry calls with D buckets. Is that that's what you call them, D, D, D buckets. That I think he he'll, he he should be able to hold it down and carry the load the way he did. Now I don't know if he's gonna get another forty point triple double in game two, but you know I, I think when was the last time Booker scored less than twenty eight in, in 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 one of these playoff games? I like I feel like he's averaging like thirty plus in in, in the series. So uh, <laughs> if, if, even if he scored less than 28, it wasn't because he didn't shoot the ball well. It probably was like yeah. an efficient 26 points, but yeah. they was up big. So it was like, yo, let's chill. Let's chill a little bit. But yeah. I, I got to ask, though, then, you know, um, you guys think Phoenix, like I said, I'm holding out hope for the Clippers to win this series. The Clippers were my pick before it started. Yeah. But, oh, and listen, and real quick, want to shout out, want to shout out um, Teresa Weatherspoon, um, Dawn Staley. Um, these ladies that's getting, um, Becky Hammond, these ladies that's getting the opportunity, you know what I mean, to be finalists and just interviews for head coach position. That's, I think that's dope. Yeah. Shout out to them, especially, especially uh, T-Spoon, because that's, that's that's a form of uh, Real Fans, Real Talk guest. As a matter of fact, at the Rucker, she came on the show at, at the Rucker. So I, I really hope, I hope that she gets it. But any one of those those, those uh, ladies would be great for the job. Um, Becky Hammond, when she won the summer league uh, tournament was two seasons ago. She yeah. she coached the team and won the summer league tournament. So they they are definitely more than qualified. And I'm 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 for having having the 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 first uh, woman head coach in this upcoming season. 
So if one of them gets the job, I, I would be all for that. Um, and just really quick to go back to what you were saying, um, Mike, is coaching is what is what separated, not making those adjustments and not saying, well, Gobert is is somewhat neutralized in this series. Maybe we do need to go another way. And I say that because if you go back to to last year, the Lakers in in in, in the playoffs. We saw we saw a lot of Dwight Howard and Javel uh, McGee against Denver. But when we got to the next round, when when they were up against Miami, you didn't see them as much because they they were kind of neutralized. So you can't be afraid to say, "Listen, I know I know this guy is. We're paying him two hundred plus million a year. He's he, he's our number two on the team. But in this series, he's not what we need on the floor. And you got to be willing to make those tough coaching decisions." Maybe he'll learn from that move, moving forward. But, you know, right now, Donovan Mitchell got to be on vacation with the rest of us. Listen, man, it's, it's a simple fix, man. It's a simple fix. Right. Uh, come to New York because Donovan Mitchell's a New York guy. And uh, he, he he's cool with Leon Rose and him. Uh, I think Leon worked for the Knicks, right? Leon worked. He worked for the Knicks, right? So yeah, no, just, just call Leon. Yeah, yeah. Call Leon. And, um, you know, we got some picks and some guys we could throw over there and just bring you back home and just get you in the comfort zone, you know? Listen. I mean, or Dame, and listen, Dame Lillard, if you ain't doing nothing, we take you too. I'm yeah. playing with me. I ain't even gonna go there. Y'all got me, man. Don't get me in my bag, man. Because hey, listen, everybody, you want everybody to come to New York? Come over. Bro. I know. Hold on. The best chance that the Knicks got to get a, a superstar to come in right now because hey. of, of how well they played this season and how they su- way far surpassed expectations. This is the best t- time and the best chance they're gonna have ever to get a big name free agent to come here. Listen, that's why coaching matters. You, you, you have a good coach who brings in a system and then guys around the league recognizing them like, yo, you know what? I, I see what they're doing over there. I might want to rock um, over there. But listen, we got we, we to get up out of here. Lastly, though, let me just shout out uh, my main man, Tom Too Cool and Patrick Mahomes. They will be on the cover together of this year's Madden. Uh, y'all, y'all know me, Eric, a big Madden Madden guy. So I'm actually looking forward to, to getting the new, the new game once that comes out. Um, let me shout out the sponsors, too. Big shout out to Kmart. Uh, the Rosado Firm, Petro Home Services, and of course, Soundview Liquors. We appreciate you guys as always. Make sure that you guys are following us on all our social media, uh, Twitter, Instagram, at Real Fan Talk, Facebook.com forward slash Real Fans Real Talk. Subscribe to that YouTube channel, YouTube.com forward slash For The Fans Productions. And do not worry if you are not in New York City on Thursday nights from 8 to 9 p.m. and you can't watch us on Verizon 43, you can hit right up to go right to the website, realfansrealtalk.com, and you can watch live from anywhere in the world. Oh, and make sure you subscribe to the podcast too, The Sanchez Show, Real Fans Real Talk. And, and, I, and I say this every week, if y'all want to get grown and sexy with us, subscribe to the, the, the Shooting the Shit podcast as well. They're all on all major streaming platforms. And uh, Mike, Mike Larry, really quick before we get out of here, I'm gonna let you you close us out with a final thought, man. Um, um final thought first and foremost, uh, be on the lookout for Mike uh, Mike Cup with Mike Larry. That'll be a podcast that I'll be starting real soon. Um, so I definitely gotta get that two on there. Um, uh, make sure y'all follow me on all social media outlets at I am underscore Mike Larry M I C L A W R Y. Um, final thought, I just want to say, uh, keep God first on everything that you do. Hashtag stay humble. Um, keep God first and here take it to the top. Uh, thanks again for real fans, real talk, legend of two games. Um, appreciate y'all for having me. Um, everybody take care, be safe out there, man. It, it's still a pandemic world that we're living in. So, you know what I mean? Be safe and, and hope y'all, hope much, much success to y'all. Yes, sir. I'm gonna pull up on you at the record soon, man. Let me get back Please out. Do. Yes, sir. Please do. Please do. We did Monday through Thursday, baby. LES open the day this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So, uh, either or, you know what I mean? I, get downtown, Eric, because we ain't been downtown yet. We, we might, hold on. You, you there Thursday? Um, I'm at I'm at Rucker Thursday and I'm at LES Express on Friday. We we might pull up one of them days. We're gonna we're gonna talk about it off there, but we might pull up one of them days. All right, all right, bet. Say that. Bet, bet, bet. All right, man. So listen for myself, Trip Young, my brother, Legend in Two Games, and of course the legend. The, man, this I I think he 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 the best person on the microphone at, at, at Rucker, but I, that's my personal opinion. Y'all vote how y'all want to vote. I go we're, with we're a little bias over there. We're a little biased. We're a little biased over there. <laughs> but uh, with that being said, man, we up out of here. Peace. Peace out. Uh huh. This is real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. We is real.
real as you thought. Real fans, real talk. We the illest, of course. What's up, guys? I'm Emerald Marie, and be sure to check us out on the web at realfansrealtalk.com.